Okay, so in this video, I'm gonna walk through the entirety of Webflow's pricing because as someone who works with Webflow every single day, I get confused by their pricing. Every client we work with gets confused by their pricing. Sometimes people accidentally add the wrong site plan or buy a workspace plan when they shouldn't have done. And I'm assuming most of the people at Webflow are also confused by Webflow's pricing, but I mean, the company seems to be doing okay, so I'm assuming it's working. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk through all the different plans and the workspaces and just kind of give you a quick overview as to which plan is for which use case and what is kind of the best setup for you. So the first thing to note is that there's two types of plan inside of Webflow. The first is the site plan. So that is the plan that goes on your website for hosting and basically just having the website live on the internet. And then you have your workspace plan and that is for your actual Webflow workspace. Now, not everyone will need a workspace plan. And to be honest, most people don't need a workspace plan, but because of where it sits, when you log into Webflow, it sits on the left-hand side when you're first in your workspace. Space. So it makes it really obvious for someone to go over there and say, well, I need to get started on Webflow, so I'm going to go pay for Webflow. But what they do is they end up paying for one of these workspace plans and they don't necessarily need it. So to figure out exactly what you do need, let's first touch on the website plans themselves. Now, there's two types of website plan. There is a general website, which is mostly for some form of marketing website. And then there is e-commerce websites. Now, most of the time, I wouldn't recommend Webflow as your e-commerce platform unless you are just selling one or two products and you want it to have a highly customized website. But if you're building out a bigger e-commerce store, it makes a lot more sense to use Shopify because it is more robust with its e-commerce features and its inventory management. Now, if you are gonna go with the e-commerce plans, the main benefit of Plus right here is mainly just the fact that it has 0% transaction fees, which can be really helpful over the standard plan. This is one thing in the past when we've upgraded a client's account is we've used this Plus plan, even though we didn't necessarily need the extra features in terms of extra items or extra CMS items, but because of the volume that they were doing, it just made more sense because we weren't having to pay that 2% transaction fee that is on the lower plan. Now, I'm not gonna to touch too much on these e-commerce plans because ultimately they're not for most people. Most people want a general site plan and ultimately a general site plan is really for any form of marketing site that doesn't have a transaction that's processed through Webflow. Now inside the normal site plans, there is technically five different site plans that you can choose from. First, there is the starter plan, but this isn't really any form of website plan because you're not gonna have a live website on this starter plan. Now, this is really just for building inside your Webflow workspace. So let's say you've started your Webflow account, it will create you a workspace and then it'll prompt you to start a initial website. Your initial website will start on this starter plan, but there's a lot of limitations with this. So this should never really go live because we're not actually trying to publish this as your main site. It is just a place that you can start building inside of Webflow and get started before you add a website plan. Now inside of here, the limitations are pretty strict. It's just two pages you can create. You can start to set up the CMS and things, but it hits its limit very quickly. Quickly. The main purpose of this is just to get you kind of hooked and using Webflow and then you upgrade to a site plan once you're actually ready to, to get started. So this isn't really for anyone to be honest besides the fact that you're just getting started. Now one thing that's really important to note with this and we'll touch on this when we get to the workspaces shortly is the fact that you can have two of these starter sites in your base free Webflow workspace but you cannot have more than two if you're not paying for a workspace. The Webflow site plans themselves do not count towards that limit, but I'll touch on that in a second. So let's jump into the basic because this is like the bottom tier for most people. Now this is best if you just have a static kind of marketing site, maybe it's like a brochure leaflet looking site. Now the limitations here are pretty decent to be honest for the first plan, like $14 a month isn't too bad to say it kind of does hosting, security, like you never have to kind of deal with anything. You never have to update plugins, which is a, a very kind of a, a big help. Now with this, it's $18 a month and $14 if you are billed yearly. This is kind of going to be perfect if you don't want to use the CMS. Now for a lot of the projects that we build, we personally use the CMS a lot. We find it very useful to kind of hand off to clients. But if you're building like a static, simple website, more of a kind of maybe just has like a few different pages, this could potentially be a great fit. 
Now, when looking at the limitations of the basic plan, the main things you're probably gonna run into if you're not using the CMS is potentially 150 pages, but it's quite unlikely that you'll build 150 static pages without needing to use the CMS. So you'll have likely upgraded to that anyway. The only one that's maybe realistic for you to hit here is this 10 gigabyte bandwidth. Now, the bandwidth is something you can potentially hit inside a Webflow depending on how big the assets are and how many people are visiting your website. So if someone was to load your website and it was 10 megabytes in size, which is quite big on a, on a specific page, then that is 10 megabytes of bandwidth that has been used. So this can be used up pretty quickly if you have not optimized your website. Now I've created a separate video on improving your bandwidth usage inside of Webflow. So I'll link that in the description of this video if you are starting to hit these bandwidth limits and you just wanna make sure you're optimizing your site so you don't necessarily have to upgrade to the next tier straight away. Now moving on to the CMS plan, this is typically the one we recommend most people get started on. The reason for this is because you can obviously add your custom domain like you could in the basic version. You have 150 pages again, but you also have CMS collections. Now when you're getting started, this is a perfectly fine amount of CMS collections and CMS items inside of here. Unlimited form submissions, 50 gigabytes of bandwidth, which again is, is decent for most people. If you're starting to hit like high traffic, that's when it makes sense to jump up into the business plan. And then in terms of the additional features here, you also have access to the editor. Now this is a temporary thing, so I wouldn't bank on it too much. This editor is a legacy editor and they're gonna remove this over time because they're adding some extra ways to access content inside a Webflow. I personally think the extra ways are better, but we will see exactly how that plays out in terms of how you actually access Webflow in future. That stuff is all a little bit up in the air in terms of how you can actually get access to other people inside of your Webflow site. And then the other thing you have is the site search on the CMS plan. Now moving from CMS to business typically happens when someone either needs more CMS collections, more CMS items, more pages, or they're starting to hit that bandwidth limit. Now inside the business plan, most of the things here are pretty much the same. You just get a little bit more of pretty much everything you had in the CMS plan. Now, as I mentioned, CMS is where we're often starting most people. If you're a startup, CMS makes a lot of sense until you hit that, that kind of limit where you need the business plan. Now, the only thing besides the kind of bandwidth and, and CMS items and you know all this kind of like more and more and more of things that's different on the business plan is the ability to have a form file upload. Now, in all of the other plans, it's not gonna let your users upload an image or a PDF to that form unless you're on the business plan. So let's say CMS is the place most people should start. You then upgrade to the business if you start to hit those limits and you kind of need any of these features here. With this, you're also able to individually update specific things inside of here. So if you start to add a lot of CMS items, you can upgrade this and it will upgrade the price as well. This is gonna stop you from having to upgrade to enterprise like quickly. One of the biggest things here might be the bandwidth, especially if you have a very big website and you're getting a lot of traffic. As I mentioned, I'll link the bandwidth video that I create in the description of this video because it can become a big issue when we're jumping from you know 100 gigabytes of bandwidth to 150 and so on. That can get pretty expensive pretty quickly and sometimes there's not necessarily a need for you to jump up to that next tier. And then finally, we have the enterprise plan. Now, Webflow Enterprise is a very different thing to all the other plans here. Webflow Enterprise is best for any company that has a website that is business critical. So it is vital to your company that your website is performing well at all times. That's when it makes sense to talk to Webflow Enterprise. But the actual solution here is a very different solution to all of the others. Pretty much everything that we've talked about so far can be customized inside of the Webflow Enterprise experience. And what you'll do is you'll go through a process with one of their reps and they will walk you through exactly what happens when you set up an enterprise website. They'll give you a kind of a custom range in terms of the amount of pages and all the different settings inside of there and tailor this exactly to what your business needs. Now, some of the main reasons someone might need to upgrade from business over to enterprise is really the security pieces, just making sure that all the kind of like red tape and, and kind of details are, are wrapped up inside the enterprise plan, alongside the increased support that Webflow Enterprise offers. Now, hopefully that is useful for you in terms of figuring out exactly which site plan is best for you. Now I'm gonna to touch on the Webflow workspaces because these workspaces are different to the site plans and really they're more supplementary to the site plans than kind of actually needed. So jumping into here, we have two different types of 
workspace. We have a workspace for a team, which is typically for a marketing team or a startups team. And then we have workspaces for freelancers and agencies. Now everyone's going to start on the starter free workspace. And this is the workspace that most people when they're getting started should stay on until they need to add extra people into their Webflow workspace and start to do some slightly more complex things. Now inside of the starter plan, everyone's going to get two of these Webflow staging websites that they can have in their workspace without them having a paid plan attached to them. As we touched on before, these staging websites are pretty limited in terms of what you can do, but providing that you're going to add a website plan to your website, this stuff here does not really matter because all you're doing is you're going into Webflow and you're accessing the site that you're paying for. So when you're paying for the website plan, you're paying for hosting, you're paying for security, you're paying for all of the things about getting the website live on the internet. When you're paying for a workspace, you're paying for access to the Webflow platform for multiple people. So what happens is a lot of people will jump in and they'll pay for this core plan here, but they don't need the core plan because if you're setting this up for your company, you're not gonna need 10 of these Webflow.io staging websites that we touched on before you're just going to need one website and that's probably going to be a hosted website because you just need your, your company website to be live. So all of these other details about like what you can do on these websites when you have this workspace plan are not really needed in most cases. Now, one thing that is very useful with all the workspaces is that you can add an agency or a freelancer as a guest to your workspace. So for example, if we worked together on a project, you could invite me and maybe someone else on my team into your workspace so we could work inside of your workspace. So whenever you log in, you're gonna see that website, but whenever we log in, we can jump into your workspace to see everything inside the website, set it up and make sure that everything can go live. The other benefit of the core plan, and this is potentially a reason that some, some people would upgrade, is that you can export the code. So if you're gonna host the code elsewhere, let's say you wanna build inside a Webflow because it has a really good builder, but you wanna host it on Netlify or somewhere else, you can then export the code once you've built it and then host it elsewhere. So this can be another reason to upgrade, but for most people, it's not actually that useful to upgrade to this plan. Before we jump into growth, I actually wanna to quickly touch on the extra seats because this is the main thing that people might actually need to upgrade for, and that is adding extra seats to your workspace. Now, when you set up inside of a starter plan, you just have one seat, and that seat is the account that you log in with. But if you want extra people on your team to have their own dedicated account to access your Webflow website, you're gonna to have to pay for an extra seat. And that is the thing that confuses a lot of people is how do I get access to my team so they can jump into the website and make changes themselves? And this is where the kind of complexity comes in. This is where like the confusing Webflow billing comes in in terms of how everything is structured. So we have a full seat here, which means that if you invite someone into your workspace and they have a full seat, they can design and manage admin settings on any of your websites. So they can do basically anything on any of your websites. If they have a limited seat, they can go into your websites, but they can only change the content. They can only change like small amounts of information inside of there. And if they have a free account, they can just review and look at the website and add comments inside of Webflow's comment mode. So what you're likely gonna need over really having like any of these pieces upgraded for most people is maybe adding an extra seat rather than adding extra plans and like continuing to upgrade your plan. Moving on to the growth plan. Again, I'm not entirely sure who this one is specifically for because if we're looking at people who are building loads and loads of websites, maybe they're an agency or maybe they're an enterprise. So this is like a, a weird one where we've never actually seen anyone upgrade to, but we have seen people upgrade to core because it can make a lot of sense. With this growth plan, you're really looking at unlimited staging websites, but inside of here, you actually have extra limitations in those staged websites. So on the first plan, whenever you had a staged website, you can only have two pages, but now you can have 300 pages on those websites before you actually add a website plan to it. There's a few other features inside of here as well, like you can add uh, password protection, 301 redirects and all these things, but this only applies to before you add a site plan because you can do all of this stuff as soon as you've added a site plan to your website anyway. So really it's just giving you more features before you launch a website, which is useful if you have lots of people building in here and you're trying to like ship a load of websites. But 
often it's not really for most people, especially if you're a startup or you know building a company. This plan is really not for those people. This plan actually mimics a little bit more like the plan that we're on as an agency, where we have multiple people inside of here and we're building websites and we need kind of access to all of these extra features. Finally, you have your enterprise workspace plan. This is only for enterprise clients who have multiple websites. So they're paying for a Webflow enterprise workspace. Now this is really like a, it's part of your deal. Like it's, it's something that you would kind of negotiate with Webflow, you'd go through the full process here. This is just like kind of like extra security, making sure things are nice and scalable, but it's not for most people. As I mentioned, business critical is, is kind of the typical way to look at, should I be a, a Webflow enterprise customer or not? Like how important is this website? to the company if the website goes offline. The other thing to look at here is just general scale as to how you're operating. Like maybe if you were a holding company and you need to build like hundreds of websites, it would make a lot of sense. I think on the Webflow uh, case studies, they have like Orange Theory Fitness. I'm assuming they're probably on an enterprise uh, workspace plan or alongside having like enterprise websites because they have so many kind of sites or like such complexity inside of there. But those are the types of companies that would make sense with the workspace plan. But as I mentioned, this is all figured out directly with Webflow's sales team. And then finally, I'll touch on the freelancers and agencies plan, which is obviously more for people who are kind of working with companies. And with this, the free plan is the same as any other free workspace plan. But then you have your freelancer plan, which kind of correlates very nicely with this core plan here. It's very similar in terms of the features that you get. You can only have 10 staging sites inside of here. You get a few extra details, a few extra little pieces inside of here, and you can also bill clients whenever you're inside of here. So one thing that's really important to note with Webflow is that technically me as an agency owner, as a, a kind of a freelancer essentially, I could have a company's website in my workspace and I could bill that client, bill that company for me hosting their website. So I can basically say to them, hey, I'll keep the website in my account. I'll keep doing maintenance, all those types of things, but we will send you the bill and you will directly pay for the bill. And that's what the client billing is, the client payments. With the agency plan, this is the other kind of uh, kind of advanced version of the freelancer plan. This is personally what we're on uh, at Demandflow. We have like a, a bunch of different seats inside of here. And this just kind of gives us full access to a bunch of features so we can build everything inside of our account before we move it over to the company's account and get things ready to launch. Finally, you have your seats inside of here, and this is basically just mimicking the same thing as before. I'm fairly certain this is basically the exact same thing as, as before, but it's just like having how many seats do you have inside of your plan. For us, I think it's maybe like six seats inside of our plan. Therefore, we have different accounts who can access all of these things and can kind of access our workspace as a whole. So to give you a full summary of all the different Webflow plans, most people are only ever going to need a Webflow site plan. Most of the time, it makes sense to start on the CMS as long as you're using the CMS. If you're not, you can start on basic. People over time will likely need to upgrade to the business plan, but you can also completely customize that business plan to however much you need to use it. You're only ever really gonna need to upgrade to a workspace plan if you want multiple people to access that workspace or if you need some of the extra build settings inside of that workspace. Hopefully that was useful. I realized that this was probably a 20 minute video of me talking about Webflow's pricing, which must show you that it is very confusing seeing as though I spend so much time inside of Webflow and I have to explain it to someone every single time. But hopefully this was useful. You should be able to get this and maybe Webflow will make some changes in future and make this a little bit simpler.